In this video, I'll be showing you how to customize LibreOffice to look and feel more like Microsoft Office. And I don't mean just switching to the tabbed interface. I will be going over how to do that, but there's a lot more that you can do with LibreOffice that I'll be discussing in this video. In case you're unfamiliar, LibreOffice is a free and open source alternative to Microsoft Office that I showcased in this video. All right, so now the first thing we're gonna do is do something about this interface. Like this looks like something pretty much straight out of Office 2003. And most people are used to the modern tabbed interface that Microsoft Office today uses. To change it, just go to View, User Interface, and then it'll give you UI variants. What we're most interested in is the tabbed interface, like this. There's also single toolbar, sidebar, compact tabbed, app or group bar compact, and then con contextual single. You can look at these and pick whichever one you prefer, but I think the tabbed variant will be familiar to most people. So we're going to select that and then click apply to all. And then that will apply that to all of our LibreOffice apps, including Impress and Calc. And there you go. Now we have our tabbed interface. This is already starting to feel a lot more like Microsoft Office, except we don't have a full screen menu when we click on the file button, LibreOffice doesn't really have an equivalent to that. All right, now the next important thing is to install the Microsoft fonts like Arial, Times New Roman, like the fonts that most people would use. Now, this step is applicable to Linux only. If you're on Windows, you will already have these fonts installed, so you don't need to worry about that. To do this, you simply install a package that contains the Microsoft fonts for Debian slash Ubuntu and its derivatives. You can install it with sudo apt install ttf dash ms core fonts dash installer. And then you just simply follow the on-screen prompts to accept the EULA and install the Microsoft fonts. And then next time you open up LibreOffice, they'll be right there. And if you need fonts that aren't installed by the TTF MS Core Fonts installer, just go to a Windows computer, then go into File Explorer, then this PC, and then navigate to C, Windows, fonts, and then you can copy any fonts you need from here onto a USB drive, and then on your Linux computer, these fonts will show up on your USB drive as TTF files. Just open each one up one by one, and then it'll pop up a window where you can install these fonts. Now, the next thing to do is make LibreOffice save in the Microsoft Office formats by default. Because by default it uses something called ODF, which Microsoft Office can technically open, but it's generally best if you can just send a Word document. So to do that, just go to Tools, Options, and then once you're in this me menu, expand the load slash save menu and then go to general and then go to always save as and then change this to the Microsoft Office formats. In this case, Word, Word 2010 365 document or docx for writer and then you repeat the same thing for 
all the LibreOffice applications. So you would do Excel for spreadsheets and PPTX for slide presentations. And you can switch the document type that these show under the document type menu. And also uncheck this warn when not saving an ODF or default format. Just that way it doesn't prompt you with warnings saying you're not saving an ODF format every time you go to save a document. Now the next thing to do is go into Microsoft Office, also under the load slash save menu, and just make sure all of these are checked off. Now by default, all of these are, except for one, I can't remember which one is not checked by default. This will just ensure maximum compatibility when you're working with Microsoft Office users. Okay, now that we're done in here, we can click OK to save our changes. And now it's saving as Microsoft Office formats by default. So now let me show you some optional things you can do to enhance your LibreOffice experience. LibreOffice will also allow us to change our icon theme, which may be very helpful if you have a custom theme and your icons blend in with that theme so you have trouble making them out. To change this icon theme, just go up to Tools and Options again. But this time we're gonna go into the LibreOffice menu and then View. And then our icon theme options are the first thing here. So you got several options for icon themes, including light and dark variants. And SVG, or vector graphics, may be helpful if you're using fractional display scaling, so that way your icons scale properly. And then don't forget to click OK once you're done to actually apply your changes. All right, so now the next thing we can do is import our templates. If we go to File and then Templates, we get our default templates here, but we can also go up to Manage and then Import, and then we just select whatever category we want, and then click OK, and then that'll give us a menu where we can go import our templates. To pull your Microsoft Office templates off your Windows PC, just go into File Explorer, then this PC, then navigate to C, Users, your username, App Data, Roaming, Microsoft, and then copy this templates folder on your USB flash drive, and then import them to LibreOffice on your Linux PC, or your Windows PC or your Mac if you installed it on Windows or Mac. Now, finally, LibreOffice has the ability to install extensions, which if you go to the extension tab, and then click on extension, and then extensions, then it'll show us extensions that we have installed. And it'll also allow us to get more extensions online. So if we click on that, it'll open up a web page where we can find extensions for LibreOffice. Like one extension that may be really helpful, for example, is called multi-format save. So we can search for it up here. And then there it is. And then we can click download latest to download it. And then we get an OXT file. What you do with that is you simply go into the extensions menu back in LibreOffice, then click add. Then you find the file on your system and then open it and then accept the EULA and then click close. And then it'll ask you to restart LibreOffice. And now that we're back in LibreOffice, for some reason it won't show up anywhere in our tabs However, if we go up to the file menu, there is multi-save right there. Let's just, for the purposes of this video, create a test file. And then we go up to file, multi-save, and then it'll give us options to save our documents, which file formats we want. You probably don't need the old .doc. You may not even want an ODF either, like just Word and PDF. You simply click this more button and then navigate to the directory that you want to save it in, in this case on my desktop, and then just call the file what you want, then click save, 
and then save again. And now we're on my desktop. We can see that it saved the file as both a Word document and a PDF. So feel free to browse the LibreOffice extension site for extensions because there is a lot you can do with this. And if you ever want to remove an extension, just go back into the extensions menu, click on the extension you want to remove, and then click remove, and then OK. And then it'll prompt you to restart LibreOffice again. But now if we look in our file menu, that multi-save is gone. And that's it for this video. Be sure to give it a like if you liked it, dislike if you disliked it, comment, share, subscribe, all that good stuff, and see you next time.